greetings and welcome to a special Wednesday edition of 10 Minute Paintings. Today I'd like to talk to you about why we use reference photos, why they are important, where we find them, and the myriad of questions that kind of surround that sort of thing. At the end of the video I'll also be showing you how I like to use reference photos in a little demo. So let's jump into it in the most common question. Do we need reference photos? How do they aid our work? To make it simple, to break it down, reference photos add a level of detail and a level of realism to our pieces that we innately wouldn't think to add in in the rendering. This is because when we think to work on something, say a tree, it looks something like this. A cloud looks something like this. Mountains look something like this, and I am wildly guilty of making mountains look like that. So <laughs> that's why I need reference photos. But reference photos allow us to work in a lot of detail, a lot of intricacy that we wouldn't innately be cognizant of. Because when we think of trees looking like that, we think of them in a very cartoony fashion. It's very simple. It's a very basic form. It's something that's very much a broken down item that was once a great subject. Because to render the full subject, we need to take into consideration a litany of different things. For example, a tree. It is formed by the wind that moves it. It is formed by the water and the irrigation that falls around it. It is formed by the ground. Is it rocky? Does it have moisture? What is happening? Where is it growing? What's the geography like around that tree? These are all factors that work into every piece of every subject of every painting. So that's a lot to consider. Whereas you can look at a reference photo and it takes all of that into consideration. It is capturing a real true tree. So that tree went through the wind patterns. It went through the irrigation. It went through all of those growing stages. It is at a specific point in its life at a specific time in a season. It is literally perfect. So you know exactly what you need to do to render something that looks real and interesting. So it saves you so much time in the process. It just it makes you cognizant of all the things you didn't even think to think of, which is absolutely incredible. So that's number one, why we need reference photos. That works for trees, that works for clouds, that works for mountains, and I'm very glad that it works for mountains. The second reason why we need reference photos is because not all of us like drawing. Some of us just like to paint. We just like to put the pigment on the canvas, work, blend, shade, work with colors, and the drawing portion, it can be a little bit frustrating. But with a reference photo, you can print it out, you can trace it, you can work with a grid. There are a myriad, a plethora of different ways you can utilize that to make the drawing process easier so you can get to the part of the painting that you like, which is the actual application of the paint. So it saves you a lot of time there as well. Reference photos also offer us a glimpse into other worlds, into other places that we've never been able to experience and we can kind of only guess as to what they really look like. I don't know about you, but I don't travel to Finland or Cuba or Mexico frequently. So to me, these things are, I kind of have these abstract ideas of what they look like. I know what they look like in cartoons and in TV shows, but I don't, I'm not well acquainted with them. And reference photos allow you to really understand them, to really see the intricacy and the detail that they hold, to see their personalities and everything going on within the subjects in the piece that you want to render. So now that we've talked about why reference photos are important, why they're useful, where do we get them? And I know that might sound like a completely crazy question. I mean, we, we get them on the internet, right? Kind of. It's complicated because generally when people think of getting things on the internet, they think I'll oh, go to Google or search nice landscapes, this or that. However, you'll probably go to Google and you'll search beautiful landscape and you'll find just wildly interesting things. However, said wildly interesting things are probably copywritten, which means if we were to download them and then work with them and then paint them and it, it would be stealing and we would be infringing on copyright and we wouldn't be able to sell the paintings that we worked so hard to render and create. So you could go out and you could take the pictures, which is something I do occasionally. 
But again, I don't travel to all of these interesting exotic places that I do want to paint. So that really isn't the answer for me. What ended up being the answer for me is the sponsor of this video. The other day I did get an email from a website called graphicstock.com and I clicked on the link, I checked the website, and I was just immediately blown away. I thought this is wildly impressive, this is everything that will make my life so much easier, I will use this so frequently, and I just need to share it with all of you. So this is my answer as to where you get reference photos. This is where I now get my reference photos. I was on there for half an hour the other day and I got these 20 reference photos, all of which will probably be 10 minute paintings in the very near future. And I was just so excited to find this website to share with you and then to make this video. So graphicstock.com actually has over 3,500, no, over 350,000 photos royalty free it's it's incredible i believe it's actually the largest library online of royalty free images and honestly it is an artist's dream it's worth noting that if you click the link in the description you can sign up today and receive seven days free of graphicstock.com to go in download all of the landscapes everything that you find interesting and it is super efficient to use you can search for things that you want in the search bar as you can see here or you can go to the tabs for landscape and nature and scroll through hundreds of thousands of wallpapers. It is, again, incredibly vast. So with that being said, let's show you how I took an image from graphicstock.com and used it as a reference photo to work on one of our future 10 minute paintings. This is going to be a speed painting showing you how I use the reference photo, but the dubbed 10 minute version is going to be up on the channel next Saturday, so look forward to that. Now let's jump into it. This is the image that we will be using to render our cloud painting. I began by simply drawing it on my canvas, however if you struggle with drawing you can use a grid or you can print it out and simply trace it. Having a reference photo gives you a myriad of different options in regards to how you want to get your image on the canvas and it just makes things a lot easier. When it comes to painting, I began with the transparent clouds in the background, and I'm noting that because I think it's really important. When a lot of us, I think, inherently, innately think of rendering clouds, we think of painting them in the same style, the same way. They're similar shapes, they're similar sizes, and they're all a very similar level of transparency. However, by assessing this reference photo, we know that there are different types of clouds in the sky, that they exist in different levels of depth, and that the transparency vastly changes from cloud to cloud. So we already have all of this additional new information to implement into our painting that will give it a lot more diversity and depth. From there, I'm going to work on my larger, more complex clouds here in the foreground, and it's worth noting that while they are all comprised of a myriad of very simple shapes, they're connected in such a correct and organic fashion. If we were to do this with our own imaginations and organic shapes, they probably wouldn't look as interesting, as intricate, as correct as these do. And again, that's why reference photos really come in handy. They solve these problems for you, they connect things in ways that you wouldn't inherently think to do, and they lay it all out there for you. It's also worth noting that clouds, or rather reference photos, don't constrain you. You can take elements from different reference photos and combine them together. You can amalgamate them. They can be a very malleable thing. You don't have to do exactly what it is. And I'm actually taking a lot of artistic liberties here in rendering my set of clouds. I like the basic shapes, I like the composition, I like the fact that it had multiple clouds, but there are things that I wanted to add and take away, and I'm doing that because it gave me the knowledge to do so, which is absolutely fantastic. So I'm just saying this so that you know it isn't a constraining thing, but rather something that simply gives you more option. You shouldn't feel like you have to copy it exactly. Now, that is essentially what our painting looks like. The 10 minute painting will be posted on the YouTube channel on Saturday with a full description of everything that we're doing. But 
If you enjoyed this, if you liked the reference photo, if you liked all of the reference photos on the side and you'd like to get your own, go to graphicstock.com slash YouTube or click the link in the description box below to start downloading and get seven days of graphic stock for free. I hope you enjoyed this very different episode on reference photos. Again, the 10 minute painting will be posted on Saturday. Until then, I hope you have a lovely week and above all, as always, stay creative.